Hey, it's Will from Your Career Mastery, and today we're gonna to be talking about stress in the workplace, and in particular, managing your stress at work. You know, we all know there's nothing worse than being stressed out about what's happening at work, or having a conflict with someone at work, or you're stressing about a project or a deadline. Um, so it's a really important issue to talk about. Um, and we know now, it's like it's well documented, the seriously negative impacts that stress can have on your body physically, but also your mental health and your relationships from the workplace, but also with your family and friends, um, because you know we spend so much time of our lives in the workplace at our jobs. It's really important that we're happy there, that we're satisfied, um, and we're never gonna be able to completely remove stress from our lives, but it's really important that we have processes and habits um, systems in place and strategies that we can come back to when we get stressed so that when these situations arise, and they absolutely will, um, that we know we've got a plan to, to deal with it. So kicking off, the, uh, kicking off the conversation, talking about the causes of stress and all throughout this little talk, I'll you know, share some examples from my life and, and things I've been stressed and things that work for me that might not work for you. Um, but again, I think hopefully there's some ideas in here that might be beneficial for you in the future. So causes. So in the workplace specifically, because there's obviously many causes of stress in life, uh, but in the workplace, you know, your workload can be a real key um, area that can cause stress, whether it's just the volume of work that's on your plate at any given time. If you're overwhelmed, you've got things coming in from left, right, and center. You've got tough deadlines, you've got projects here, you've got projects there, you've got fires to put out. All of a sudden your workload is really intense. That can be a really um, big cause of stress in the workplace and for you. Deadlines, there's nothing worse than a deadline saying you've got to get something done by this date or else, or else the sky will fall out or whatever. Um, and I, I know I sort of say that in jest, but sometimes there are deadlines that we actually really do have to meet. Um, and they can be a really um, significant cause of stress as well. Um, and then just problems with your workload. So if you're working on a project and it's stressful because there are, there are challenges that you're having trouble solving, not, not, not sure who to talk to or what to do or what's, what's the best path forward, you're dealing with all of uncertainty or ambiguity in a project or a task that you're working through, and that can cause you a lot of stress too, sort of you know, the stress of the unknown. And if you've got all these things matched in together, you're working on a big project that's high volume in terms of work, you've got tough deadlines, and there's uncertainty and problems and ambiguity, then that can be, you know, that's like the mother load of stress. So there's, there's workload. But then there's also conflict, right? I actually like to think, well, I don't like to think, but I think many of the stressful experiences that I've had personally, there's been plenty that were workload related, don't get me wrong, but definitely conflict with people in the workplace. And there can be, healthy conflict, and not necessarily healthy conflict, but it can be healthy tension with other coworkers or your manager or senior directors, whoever it is you're working with, but there can be unhealthy tension as well. So conflict with your manager, uh, maybe another person in your team, uh, maybe a supplier, so someone that is not even in the business, they're an external party. All these sorts of factors can cause stress too, and maybe someone's being really critical. Maybe you're being bullied in the workplace, which is unacceptable, by the way. Maybe you're being, yeah, being criticized, you're being bullied. Bullying is absolutely disgraceful and, and that is, you know, if there's any causes of stress in the workplace, I would say if you're being bullied, that, that is terrible and something that you should be addressing with the right people absolutely immediately. Another team member, could be a jealous coworker, could be someone that just doesn't see eye to eye with you, don't have similar values. Maybe you resent them because uh, you put in so many more hours and yet they get more recognition. Maybe that's causing a bit of stress. Um, maybe they're just not easy to work with. Maybe they're a bit lazy. Maybe they are combative. Maybe they're not super collaborative. Maybe they talk over you. Maybe they shut your ideas down. These can be all things that can cause conflict and in so doing cause stress as well. An external party. You wouldn't believe it in many cases. Like some of the people that you, if you work in a business, some of the people you pay to provide a service for you can cause you stress. You're like, aren't you supposed to be like, you know, you work for me, dude, <laughs> or girl, whoever. Um, you should be like on your best behavior. You shouldn't be causing me stress. I'm paying you to provide a service, but also, you know, uh, present the picture that everything is going great, etc. 
but there's nothing worse than a supplier causing stress because then that can reflect on you and that can then cause conflict with you and your manager or another team member. And because if a supplier is not up to par in terms of the delivery of the work and you're having to pick up the pieces, all of a sudden your volume of your workload increases. And this is where situations can start to spiral out of control if you've got one problem, starts to become multiple points of stress. You know, that can just become a really tough situation to deal with. But these are sort of external causes of stress, you know, like you're dealing with an external, another person that causes conflict. Your workload, although it's internal, it's almost like an external work factor. It is, the work is what it is. What you make of it, how you interpret it, and how much stress that causes you become then the internal, so causes of stress. So there are many, there are many sort of, um, psychological principles and factors that can cause stress, but I've sort of broken down three here that sort of, they resonate with me, they might not resonate with you, but um, there are many factors out there and you'll know what, what works for you or what causes you stress. For me, catastrophizing is a real big one. So like, I know for me, something bad happens or if I have conflict with a person, it's usually when I'm going to bed at night, which is so convenient, my mind starts to replay what happened and I start to like, visualize dramatic things happening and things that didn't even happen all of a sudden it's 1am you're like how the hell did i get here i'm supposed to be getting some rest next minute i'm you know imagining being attacked by someone in the business or something do you know what i mean like just making it way way worse than it is but it's something internal it's something that i can control which is a positive thing right we'll talk about that in a sec when we get to remedies but making things worse than they are and not keeping them in perspective that can be an internal cause of stress so you've got an external situation it is what it is but you're making it worse and you're causing more stress by how you're interpreting it so that's that self-doubt so if you're in a situation where your workload is pretty crazy and you're working on a project with a lot of uncertainty and ambiguity you might start to doubt yourself and think oh am i the right person for this project is this gonna not make me look good? Am I not gonna get a bonus or that promotion or change jobs within the company, whatever it is? Is it gonna be a flop? Am I gonna get fired? Uh, am I gonna be made, made redundant? You know, this is that self-doubt and that self-talk that starts to become really negative and you start to um, you know, lose faith in your skills and capabilities when it's just your interpretation of the situation. So self-doubt, making it worse than it is, but also taking it personally. So you might get criticism uh, on some work that you've done, for example. And you might say, you know, what one person might interpret that as being, all right, cool, that's good feedback. Thank you, I really appreciate that. It's very honest, maybe a little too blunt, um, but it's feedback that I can then take an action and implement to make myself uh, better at my job. Or you might be someone who takes that feedback and thinks, oh my God, this person hates me, I'm terrible. And it starts to like spiral back into self-doubt and to catastrophizing. Because you think, oh no, this is, their criticism felt like an attack on me personally and who I am and my whole identity. So these are internal causes of stress and they, they work sort of hand in hand with you know, the external causes of stress, whether it's working with someone or a project. So, so that's that. But again, I want to reiterate that you know, it'll be different for you. This is very much a reflection of, of me and my experience and my uh, challenges in the past and, and what I've faced in my career. Uh, but there'll be there'll be more of this for you in more detail. So I think it's really important that you know you sort of go away after you watch this and and have a think about what are your causes of stress, both uh, external and internal, um, and then that will lead into the next part of what we're going to talk about. And they're the remedies. And likewise, these are things that work for me. They might not resonate with you, but there might be some tips or some tricks or some insights here that um, help you build your arsenal of strategies for dealing with stress. So. Like I said, first part, self-awareness. So it's helpful for me managing stress, just knowing that these are things that cause me stress and how my natural inclination as a person tries to deal with it. So if I don't check myself, my mind can just run havoc with uh, catastrophizing a situation. I don't really struggle with taking things personally. I actually prefer honest, blunt feedback. Um, like the more candor, the better, because I want to improve my career as quickly as possible. The best way to do that is get feedback from people who are more senior than me. At least that's how I feel. But I know that I can catastrophize. But because I know that I do that, that means that with that self-awareness, I can start to manage that. So it's so important to know what are your triggers of stress? 
Um, where does your, what does your mind start to naturally do when you feel stress? Is it something you feel in your body? Do you tighten up? Does your breathing change? Do you start to get afraid? Do you start to resent people? Um, do you start to feel doubtful? What's your trigger? It'll be different for everyone, but it's so, so important as a starting point for managing stress that you understand what your triggers are, both internal and external, because then managing that becomes so much easier or at least so much clearer. So self-awareness. Second one is just to talk to your manager. You know, if you're in a stressful situation, I'm a big believer in not trying to just, don't try and hold on to it. Like don't say, all right, cool, I'm stressed. I got all this stuff going on, but I can do it. I can manage it. You know, I'm good for it. I can take on anything. You know, you got a project for me? Yes. You got more work? Yes. Like don't be a yes person. Because I actually think that frankly, it's a little bit immature. Um, it just shows a lack of being able to set effective priorities and manage your workload, which all senior people need to do. None of us have infinite time in a day, so it's super important that you manage your time to work on the things that are most important. And if you can't do something, be transparent with that person because you don't wanna let that person down by saying you can do it when you can't do it on time and to the best of your ability. So talk to your manager. Say, look mate, this is my workload. This is what I've got on. This is what I'm struggling with and I'm feeling kind of stressed. Can I get some support? Now your manager, if they're a good manager and a good person, should come to the party with you. They should say, look, thank you for telling me. Like most times they would wanna know. Like I can imagine, I'm, I don't work as a manager, but I've had some great managers, I've been very fortunate. They wanna know how you're feeling. They wanna know what's going on in your world because they're looking after a set of resources. They need to try and manage that as effectively as possible to drive a result in the business. So if you're struggling, if you're, you know, think of yourself as a cog in the machine, and if you're, if one cog starts to struggle, that can have rippling effects across the whole business. So it's super important that you're able to communicate with your manager how you're going, and if you can't take on certain parts of your workload, they should be able to try and help you delegate to people who do in, have capacity in your team or in the wider business. Again, if they're a good manager, that's what they should do. And I can't, I mean, I mean, you probably know this, right? There's nothing that makes your life better or worse than having a good or bad manager. If you've got a great manager, like that, your life is great. Like they'll support you, they'll be there for you, you'll learn from them, they'll help grow you in the business and grow your value. And you know, most good managers say, you know, they're not doing their job right if you're not in a better job or being paid more or you've moved on from the business in a few like for the right reasons in within a few years. So but if you've got a bad manager, oh my god, like I've had some terrible ones and they don't know what you're up to and they can't support you and they, they say the wrong things and they're just not accessible when you need them. Anyway, I'm probably preaching to the converted here, but if you've got a good manager and you feel like you have that um, relationship and that rapport, talk to them. It's so, so important, both for your mental health and also for that transparency as a team. Set priorities, boundaries, and expectations. I know a lot of junior people struggle with this, like grads or people in their early 20s, if you're just starting out, you always wanna say yes. You never wanna come across as being someone that can't help or take on new things and you wanna show you've got a great attitude, which is great. But in the long run, it can be so dangerous. So you really wanna be firm in knowing in your role, what are the most important things to work on? What are your KPIs? What's gonna drive business results? That relates to your uh, particular area of expertise. And you wanna set boundaries and priorities and expectations. So if, talking about priorities, you need to know what the most important things are. And if people come to you with requests, say, all right, cool, I either can't help you with that at all because I've got some really important stuff going on, but I'm sorry, but he's someone who can. Or you say, look, I'd love to help you. I just can't get to that right away. Just later this week or early next week or in a fortnight, does that work for you? And set these priorities and set those expectations because it's so important. And again, if you're working with someone they, who, who's got good rapport and is a good person, they will say to you, look, no worries, I totally understand, I'll find someone else. Or they might say, look, I hear that, but this is a really important broader business deadline. I think if you talk to your manager and say, this is what we need to work on, they'll understand and you can shuffle your priorities again. Um, but again, man, you know, having boundaries with people, not saying yes to everything, not taking on more than you can chew, it's so important, but it's also mature in your, um, in your role to know your value, to know what is important to be working on and to set those boundaries with other people in the business. Super helpful. Asking for help. 
Something I notice like so commonly, especially around junior people, I think everyone struggles with this to an extent, but particularly junior people, is being afraid to ask for help. Like if you're working on something and it's too much or you don't know what to do, you should be reaching out to the smartest people in your business and making friendships, making connections with these people because they can help you and they'll make you smarter and bringing those people into your projects will make them more effective and drive better results and be make you look better essentially. But you gotta ask for help. You can't have an ego about it. You need to find people who are smarter than you and you need to work with them. It's so important. Again, like I said before, it makes you look smart when you work with smart people because it makes your projects more effective and have better results. But also you learn from them and you build those connections and you build your social network in the company. It's so important. You've got to ask for help if you're struggling and just don't have an ego about it. I, I have no ego about any of this stuff. Like if I'm facing an issue, I mean, try and solve it yourself if you can, but if you're really hitting the wall, reach out to someone because you might find someone who's, who's solved that problem and can help you like in a second. So it's super important to do that. Put in some early hours in the morning. So this relates to me because if I've got something that is like, I've got some crazy deadlines or a high volume of work, and I need to find some extra time in a day to get this stuff done. I know that after six, seven, eight o'clock at night, I'm brain dead. I got nothing. I need to be on the couch with Netflix or watching Seinfeld or uh, having a ginger beer or something, having dinner with my spouse and just relaxing. Uh, at Late at night, I got nothing to give. And it actually starts to affect my sleep and now I'm less productive the next day, etc. So for me, preferably, Excuse me, if I got stuff I need to do, I'll get up early in the morning when I'm fresh, hit the gym, um, get up, I don't know, six o'clock, seven o'clock, and put in an hour or two before work to find some extra time that's undistracted where you can be focused and get ahead on certain tasks before the day's really kicked off. So that I'm not really a morning person, but like I find that that works for me only because I know at night um, I'm brain dead, I got nothing to give. Complete zombie on the couch, forget about it. But again, that comes back to self-awareness. If you can work in the evening, do it. Whatever works for you. Just because I said working early in the morning works for me, doesn't mean that you have to do it. So again, self-awareness, what works for you. Um, again, this works for me too, right? So journaling and organization. So the journaling aspect particularly, for me, I really it really helps me get perspective of my workload and what I'm struggling with and my tasks. If I could just write it down, put it in paper, put it on a spreadsheet where I manage you know, my daily um, projects and all the things I need to do, all the, all the little components. If I can get it out of my head and on paper, I can look at it objectively. And also for me personally, there's something about getting it, like writing it or getting it out of my head that takes a bit of a load off my shoulders because then you can sort of look at it and you're not trying to mentally juggle all these different, both external and internal factors because when it's on paper, like I said, you can look at it objectively. When it's all just swishing around your head and your thoughts, I find like it can get a bit mixed up and your imagination can get in there. And if you catastrophize or self-doubt or take it personally, you can start to snowball things. So get it out of your head, get it on paper. But also being organized and how you structure your time and your week can really help you manage your stress. So I'm gonna do another video on productivity and about how you manage your calendar, manage your time, and again, things that work for me. Um, but being organized and staying organized when you're stressed can make it so much more helpful. Because then again, if you're organized and you ask for help and you get it, you wanna be in a position to hand off that work as soon as possible. And if you're organized, if you've got the documentation, the structure, the workflows, the project views ready to go and hand off, it'll make your life so much easier. So there's that. And then this is all sort of, you know, I mean, this is all good stuff, right? But some of this stuff is in your job. But also if you're stressed, like, um, talk to your spouse or your partner, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, a friend, your roommate, whoever, talk to someone about it. It's actually very helpful, I find, to talk to someone outside of your workplace about what's happening in there because they can help provide, again, perspective and a different view, but also helping to talk about it and just be so therapeutic, like, you're in a stressful situation, you're just so bogged down, you, you're so involved in it. Having someone who can help you pull back from the situation and see the long view, so beneficial. Even just helping you relax, helping you calm down, getting some of that, um, you know, getting some of that cortisol, those stress hormones out of your system and helping you just unwind a bit will help you come back to these situations with a fresh set of energy and feeling a little bit more recharged. 
So talking to your spouse and partner, I mean, I try to talk to my partner all the time about what's going on at work. We have a very regular dialogue about what's going on at her work, what's going on at my work, and it's great for our relationship. And we both work in marketing, so there's a lot of commonalities in the day-to-day -day operations of what we do. So we're very lucky in that respect. Um, but also, this, it's good to check in on your partner, see how they're going. I mean, you should be doing these things anyway <laughs> if you've got a partner. Um, and then the last one is just find some time if you can to relax. So again, these are some strategies for managing your workload and managing your projects and you know, if you've got conflict as well. But for you, for you personally, how you manage your mind and your body, like it's so important is to find time if you're stressed to relax. Watch a silly movie. I love watching like The Other Guys with Will Ferrell or Step Brothers or Talladega Nights. It's something silly, something like dumb that you can unwind and relax and have to think about. There's nothing in that movie or that show or whatever that reminds you of work. You can just totally chill out. Helps you unwind. Meditation, that can work for you. Doesn't work for everyone. Sort of sitting still in a room, it's not everyone's bag. I don't mind it on occasion. I find it can be quite helpful just to sit back and just to breathe and again, find some mental space. And I actually find sometimes when I meditate, that mental space helps me actually have good ideas and different ways of solving the problems that I'm facing. So that can be really good. But just find things to do to recharge. You know, I, got, I play guitar, acoustic and electric. That's something you can do. I just sit on the couch and play a country music song or something. And that helps me just chill and relax. And again, it's just a different thing that takes me away from work. Maybe you play sport or play golf or something. Whatever you do, whatever it is for you, if it's gym or boxing, whatever. Go for a walk around the block. You need to find ways to get that stress out of your body so that you can come back to these situations with, again, a fresh perspective. You're energized. You, you know, you're not letting that stress compound. You're trying to short circuit it. But again, so much of this just comes back to self-awareness. What works for you won't work for everyone else. What works for me won't work for you. What works for you won't work for me, maybe. But hopefully there's some tips in here, just a way of thinking about managing stress at work. Um, so you don't let it get out of control. You don't let it compound. You can sort of see it coming, short circuit it, deal with the situation, and then move forward from there. So I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Feel free to shoot a comment uh, below if you've got any questions. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Again, putting out more videos every week. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon.